Welcome back. Are you ready for retirement? Planning for retirement can be a stressful endeavor for an individual, but when planning for retirement as a couple, the mistakes can be further amplified. A recent Harris poll found that a third of American couples are not saving for retirement, with nearly as many never even discussing how much money they will need to achieve that retirement comfortably. Joining me right now are a pair of financial experts, Retire Inspired podcast host Chris Hogan and best-selling author Rachel Cruz. Good to see you both. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Chris, let's, let's first kick it off with why. Why are couples having a harder time getting the nuts and bolts of retirement and getting in step with one another when it comes to their money? Well, I think it comes from a lack of training and, and confidence. You know, money is a very personal topic. You're either taught about that growing up or you're left to fend for yourself on your own. And so when you get married, now you have this issue that maybe you've never even worked on or you don't know how to approach it. Yeah, I think, you know, it really does start at home because as a child, you learn very basic things like save, you know, don't overspend. You know, Rachel, one of the more alarming statistics is just how many couples aren't truthful with one another regarding money issues, right? Right? Two in five are keeping information to themselves. That's right. Financial infidelity has become a huge issue, and that's going to lack trust in all areas of your marriage. A lot of people say when they find out their spouse has lied about money, it almost feels like an affair. And so being truthful is key. Even though it's a hard conversation, you want to be up front because you, have, you guys as a couple have to face your reality in order to get to your future. Yeah, and it is a, it is a hard conversation to have, especially if one person has a mentality of spending a lot and, and racking up a lot of debt and the other person is not. I was told that you should bring up these conversations when you're either like on a hike or on the beach or doing something that the both of you enjoy where there's no stress of, okay, let's get our money ideas together at the kitchen table. Do it when you're out and about. Right, Chris? I mean, h how do you bring up the, the, the conversation? Well, I encourage people, Maria, to have what's called a dream date. And I love your suggestion. Go somewhere where it's low stress, or guess what? Just sit at the kitchen table. Make sure the kids are asleep and just sit there. And I want you to talk about your dreams. What are the things you want to do? I think it's easier to start with those dreams. Then you can begin to get tactical later. Right, because one scary statistic is the amount of debt. I mean, debt rates of America's seniors, for example, with those in their 60s, they're carrying an average of $50,000 in debt. Is the problem amplified by living above your means, Rachel? Oh, absolutely. My friend Chris Hogan here always says that debt is a thief. It steals your income from you, and it's hard to build wealth when your paycheck is going out the door in payments. And so that's why I suggest everyone getting out of debt first, listing all of your debt smallest to largest, not including your house, paying off all of your debt, getting an emergency fund in place, and then start investing 15% of your income into retirement. Because again, when, you're, when your paycheck's going out to car payments and credit cards, it's hard to build wealth. So the first thing you need to do then, Chris, is to get out of debt. Do, do as much as you can to pay down your debt, and then you could start socking away some money. I absolutely agree. When you get rid of debt, you give yourself a raise. So imagine getting a raise without even having to go talk to your boss. So once you do that, I want you to build up a fully funded emergency fund. Three to six months of expenses. This will give you some cushion between life and you. And then you can start to invest. And I tell people, when you're investing, you're giving yourself two powerful options. You're having time and you're allowing compound interest to grow your money. Isn't it interesting that couples don't, don't discuss this or have these kinds of conversations before they walk down the aisle? Oh, it's oh, absolutely, absolutely. It blows me away. Yeah. I would encourage couples to do this when you're in, engaged. Sit down and walk through this. Listen, if you do pre-marriage counseling, you need to do some kind of financial education. And that will allow you to get on the same page with your goals and then understand what are we working toward. Right. So, so Rachel, what are, give us the one or two or, or top three ideas that couples should be doing as it relates to their retirement. Sure. Well, first and foremost, go sit down with someone that you trust. This is someone you can sit down with, I would say, in person, not someone over the phone, but someone in person to say, hey, here is, here's our financial goals. Here's where we're at and getting on the same page and communicating. Number two, make sure you both understand what you're putting your money into. When my husband and I first got married and we sat down, I asked a thousand questions because I wanted to be 100% positive. Okay, this is what I'm putting my money in. Yeah. Because a lot of people, one spouse may not 
you know, enjoy it. They may say, oh, sweetie, you go do it. It's fine, whatever. No, you want to be unified. You both want to be on the same page. Yeah, but Chris, I mean, you know, Rachel's number one is sit down with someone who can help you. That's, that's one of the biggest issues. People don't know who to trust. And half of the, the money managers out there, they've got all these hidden fees that people are getting feed to death. Uh, you know, I would say my advice is to first talk to each other about your goals. Okay, I would like to have children and, and, and buy a home. Okay, I would like to be able to pay for my child's wedding. You know, make sure you've got those big ticket items under control, know what you want, and then you could try to figure out a plan of how to get there. I think that's a great piece of advice. Listen, when you're united in your goals and you understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, you can stay focused. And then I would encourage you to gain agreement on your plan of action, and then you can involve a third party, a professional. And Maria, I encourage people to find a professional that has the heart of a teacher. That means they want to help you reach your goals. They're not just trying to sell you some stuff. All right, we will leave it there. Chris and Rachel, great to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks, you. Great advice for our viewers. Still to come